Yo, 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 yo. What is up, YouTube, and welcome to the first audition, the first edition of the Late Night Show with Zion Zenith. Now, I've been talking to peers of mine, and they've been saying stuff like, yo, I have an idea for you. You should do this. Um, I think it'll be really good for your channel. Being that I'm so behind due to life and due to work and due to everything I do in my life, um, they came up with the idea that I should have a late night show. And I thought it was good about it because I always wanted to bring pop culture and I, wa I always wanted to bring different things to this channel outside of football. First off, I just wanted to say shout out to the people that's here tonight. We got Hit Squad. What's up, my man? Thank you for being here tonight. We got Logan. We got Slay. Let's get it. I'm going to drop the link in a minute but i just wanted to come on tonight to kind of let you guys know that i don't know why my green screen is being so weird that actually that's actually pretty cool you see all that banana tree or that palm tree picks up with that green screen did not know that was going to happen but it happened that being said um starting off to kind of rough start but that's okay this is the first edition of the late night show and what i'm going to bring you guys here on this late night show is just recapping things that happened throughout the week and also we're going to try to make it at least three to four times a week where I can come and I can just talk about things or trending topics or just things that went down in the world of sports, in the world of pop culture, in the world of music. If any new movie got released, if every, any new um, album got released, or if any crazy shit happened, like Chris Rock slapping, getting slapped by Will Smith at the Oscars. And what's up, Hit Squad? Thank you so much for joining tonight. So what I'm going to do is, guys... Um, I'm going to open up the phone lines and we'll get into the topics if you guys want to join up. And I, uh, I wasn't expecting anybody to tune in this late, but the fact that you guys are here, I really respect that. So there's the link and we can get into the topics. Um, obviously I'm not a big fan of, I'm a fan of movies. I'm a big movie buff, but I'm not a big fan of like, you know, award shows because I just feel like sometimes they're just so like Hollywood to a sense of the real movies don't really get the limelight or don't really get the awards that they deserve um uh, but that being said dune did win six awards tonight i'm gonna bring in logan what's up logan your device is not connected so please reconnect your device and we'll get you on the show and that being said he reconnected his device and he's gonna appear on the show what's up logan um i was just talking about dune real fast and i just want to say with dune like you know a lot of a lot of the movies in hollywood don't really get the recognition at these award shows what's going on slay What's up, Slay? A lot what's of what's up, peepers? Whatever. What's yeah. up? Let's get it. A lot of these people don't really get the recognition that a lot of these movies don't really get the recognition that they do, you know, that they deserve in Hollywood. And these award shows kind of don't really do a good job on showcasing the best movies at the time. Now, I'm not dissing all award shows, but especially with the Oscars, it kind of been basically a stale plate for the last couple of years. But I am proud to say that the Oscars got it right. And our first topic of the hour, which is going to be fast, because I don't know if you guys watched Dune. Logan, did you watch Dune? Hell no. No, Slay, did you watch Dune? Did I watch the Oscar? I want Logan's no. nuts too. I want Logan's mom too, man. Let's I'm going to knock Thank you the man, fuck out. Tuning in tonight. That being said, I just want to say that let's do a little cap on Dune. Uh, and I'll bring Logan and Slay on when we when we talk about the next subject, which is going to be Tyreek Hill. Being that I'm late to the news, like always, you know, we are going to talk about Tyreek Hill in a bit because I did want to talk about that because I think that sets up Miami excellently to win, to win a, a not award. I know we're talking about the Oscars, but to win, um, you know, not to win any. They're, they're not going to get anywhere in the conference, but. Like just adds competition. I just want to say what's up, Hit Squad. Are you a fan of Dune, my guy? Dune? Nah, not me personally. I've heard about it though. I got you. I got you. So let's let's bring Logan and Slay back. And I thank you for being here, guys, tonight. That that means the world to me that you guys are here for the first official episode. You know, question this is just the off the squad. Ring. Yo, yeah, go ahead. Ask the question, it, Hit Squad. Are you in the East Coast or West Coast? Uh, I'm on the East Coast. Oh, you're on that two o'clock time, man. Yeah, it's He's two forty where I live right now. Damn. Up late oh. to support the homie. I appreciate that. Hit Squad was probably on YouTube, and he's all like, "Oh my I'm god, this guy's about to go time, live! So. What an idiot! I'm gonna tune in to see what it's about." <laughs> yeah, what's crazy was I was um, I was playing a game of Apex, and then okay. I got a notification you go on live, and I was like, "You know what? Let me just uh, let me just tune in." So I appreciate yeah. that, man. 
Uh, wow. Just um, Joel, actually, shout out to Classified 3F. Make sure you guys go follow him. Logan's a mod, if you don't mind. Link in Hit Squad's channel in the description. Link in your channel in the description. Slate's channel in the description. And also Joel's channel in the description. Gave me the idea for, like, this late night show. Because, hey, I'm always so late with the news due to my work schedule that I just wanted to bring a weekly night show to kind of catch up on pop culture, entertainment, or anything sports-related that I may have missed to upload to my channel throughout the week. So, that's why I came on tonight and try to give a late late night show, and I, I wasn't expecting anybody to join in. So thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah, not a problem. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great trade for the um for the Dolphins. I mm-hmm. mean, I think it was a fair trade, you know, right? Because but real fast, like before we get kill, into Tyree right? Kill, I just wanted to say real fast that Dune. If you guys never watched it, you guys should watch it. I really wanted to get into that discussion real fast, like, but if you guys never watched Dune. You guys should watch it. I just repeat myself. I just I just noticed that. That being said, it did win six Oscars, and it well deserves to win six Oscars. The director of this movie is Dennis. Um, I, I don't want to slaughter his last name, but he basically, he directed Blade Runner 44, uh, 2044. He directed a lot of great movies. Um, his cinematography film, um, his uh, cinematography skills in film is, is really something that is lost it's a lost art and and what i'm gonna do right now is i don't want to don't want to slaughter his name so what i'm gonna do is uh i'm gonna pull up well as you can see on screen that is the films that is i'm so all over the place right now i'm sorry about that guys but that is the awards that dune won and dennis and i'm not even gonna say his name but what i am gonna do is i'm gonna share the screen for you guys so you guys can see the films that this guy worked on and also what like what, you know, Hollywood is just so plain nowadays and everybody just repeats stories over and over again. But look at that, Enemy, Prisoners, Sicorio. I don't know if you guys ever watched Sicorio. Sicorio is one of me favorites, uh, action movies in the past pre- uh, previous years. You know, Hollywood gets so recycled with the same storylines over and over again. I don't know if you guys seen Sicorio. Sicorio is an excellent film, followed by Sicorio 2. He did a rival perfect film about aliens where you don't really see the aliens but just the whole drama and the whole suspense of the arrival film is absolutely amazing he also did blade runner uh 2049 we are just talking about dune and it wasn't going to make a dune part two if dune didn't really do good but the fact that dune did good and it won six oscars is why we're talking about it tonight because if you guys never watched dune you guys should win dune which brings us to the next, uh, not Vin, you guys should watch Dune. I'm sorry, guys. I'm all over the place right now. I've been drinking since 10, and I am pretty, pretty, pretty good right now. But I just want to come live and, and bring you guys this first edition of the Nate Light Show with Zion Zenith and the gang. We got Hit Squad. We got Logan. We got Slay in the building. That's being said, I know Slay wanted to talk about this, so let's talk about it. We got Tyree Kill. Being acquired by the Miami Dolphins for a hundred and twenty million dollar deal, I absolutely love this love this move by Mike, the new head coach of the Dolphins. Um, I'm gonna let Slay touch on it first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, uh, agreed. Um, this this trade, you know, I, I don't know. It just it just it came out of like a, sh- a shock to me. What? Um, but like, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> oh, my, 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 make me happy. Let's but like, it. seriously though, like this trade was so fucking like it was so shocking. Like it was so shocking. It wasn't even funny. Like it just came out the bloom. Like who expected Tyreek Hill to be traded? Devontae Adams just got traded to the Raiders. And now Tyreek Hill got traded to the Dolphins. Um, Tyreek Hill um, said he wanted to be the highest paid receiver in the NFL. Um, and that would be more than Devontae Adams. And I'm not sure if you want to pay a receiver $30 million a year just to play receiver. Who wants to fucking do that? Like, are you, are you really going to pay someone $30 million just to catch a football? Come on. Um the Chiefs did smart here. They got a good amount of, you know, capital. And they get cap space. And they get cap space for the next three years to spend on whoever the hell they want to spend on. That That's smart. 
Um, even though you're losing an electric player like Tyreek Hill, but you still get cap space for the next three years and don't have to deal with this contract. So that's a great trade for them. Absolutely. I mean, um, I think you make a good point there, Slay. Uh, hold on, give me one sec. Hold on, hold on. No problem, bro. Logan, do you have any thoughts while uh, Hit Squad my, handles My bad. Stuff? No, nah, I, uh, I, I just wanted to turn off my fan because my fan's like right behind me. Um, and I didn't know if y'all could hear it. Uh, but no, nah, what I was uh, going to say was um, I like the trade. My if you're hot, bro, turn on your fan. I could care less if I hear oh, it, bro. No, as long no, as no. You're I just, I'm one as of those people. As... I slotted so much the intro, bro. Like, I, I repeated myself five times. So your fan, dude, if you're hot, turn on your fan. It's no, okay. no, no, it's no, no. Respect, no. My, 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 my whole apartment is cold. I like my oh, place gotcha. cold, but gotcha. I just I like, like my room extra, extra cold. So I'm Gucci. Like uh, but no, what, what I was saying was um, <clears throat> I like the trade. The trade is good for Miami. I think it's really good for the Chiefs, and I'm going to get into that in a moment. But for me, it's kind of like – because I don't believe in Tua. I, I genuinely do not believe in Tua. I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what this does. In my honest, in my honest opinion, I know that they went and they got Teron Armstead. Um, I know that you know. It, I'm not going to deny the fact that it's going to be an excellent duo between Waddle and Tyree Kill. But my thing is, is that this dude can barely get them folks the ball. He doesn't have the arm power. I know that he has accuracy to him. I do like him in that aspect. But I do think that that hip injury does kind of play. A little bit into his game. I don't know. When you look how he's been playing, I, I understand it's different in the NFL. I know in college, you know, he's dealt with that, uh, with the hip as well. I'm not saying that he's a bum of a quarterback, but I'm just saying, like, I don't I don't think that this, you know, makes them win the division. You know what I mean? They still got to deal with the, with the Buffalo Bills. Now, on the flip side of things, I see Chiefs fans, like, freaking out that they lost Tyreek Hill. In my honest opinion, this might be good for the Chiefs because I don't know if you guys remember, but last year a lot of people were saying the Chiefs didn't look the same. The offense couldn't get going. Almost like the the offense got figured out in a sense. You know, not like yeah, like they got this like. I'm sorry, not, to interrupt, but no, I, no, no, I, you good. You I good. see your point. It's kind of like we were so culture shocked by uh, the Kansas City offense the the previous two and a half years that last year it kind of felt that teams kind of caught on to what they were scheming up. Yeah, exactly. And, yes. you, and you even saw it when we played them. I, I And we give a lot of credit to Patrick Graham and James Bradbury in that game. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, so a lot of people felt that, you know, Ch- uh, the Kansas City Chiefs' offense got figured out. Now, if I'm Andy Reid, the offensive guru, right, I'm going back to saying, okay, let me switch things up a little bit. You know, maybe I don't need to have – all burners on the outside. I still got Travis Kelsey, who's a beast. I still, I think they still got Hardman. Uh, they still got Edwards Hilaire back there. But most importantly, and they just added MVS. Yeah, they just added uh, Mar- uh, Marquez Vantley Scanley. Uh, I think that's his name. Uh, Valdez yes. Scanley, my fault. Yes, um, but most importantly, they got Patrick Mahomes. And not a lot of teams have Patrick Mahomes. And they could go into this draft and, you know, select a, a two wide receivers if they wanted to. I don't think they would, but, you know, if they wanted to. Because when you think about it, Valdez Scantley is completely different than most of the wide receivers that they've had in recent years outside of maybe Josh Gordon. But Josh Gordon and Valdez Scantley are, at the moment, I don't think are on the same level. Prime Gordon's different, but, yeah. So I think it worked out for both sides. Not to go on a rant or nothing, but I think it worked for, It worked out for both sides, but... Oh, dude, uh, you're never uh, going on a rant. Your time on here, take as much as time as you want. Hey, I, 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 just, I just don't believe in Tua. In, in, my, in my honest opinion, I don't. And I'll be real with you. Hypothetically, right? Let's let, For just bullshit sakes, right? Let's say mm-hmm. you put, you know, someone that has at least an average arm. Right. Let throw Daniel Jones in that situation. I'm not saying that Daniel Jones is a ginormous improvement over Tua, though I would take Jones over Tua. I'm not saying he's a gi- giant improvement, but I think he has a stronger arm than Tua does. So I think that that could be, you know, I think that's someone that could get them uh, those wide receivers to ball. Where Tua, I mean, dog, he was under throwing receivers last year. I mean, it, it, it's just, it, it's not, you know, crazy to say that this kid doesn't have an arm and i wouldn't be shocked when you look at 
the when you look at how Tua plays and when you look at his stats, right, and you look at his um, QBRs, in which I don't I don't really care for them to be honest with you, they're very similar of like a Jimmy Garoppolo, and I mean the San Francisco 49ers are trying to ship the guy out. You know, so I think that, you know, we'll see how it plays out this year, but don't be shocked if Miami picks up a quarterback next year. Because I, I just feel that you have two elite burners on the outside and you still have Gusecki, who's a burner. You need someone that's going to be able to get them that ball. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that Tua can't, but I'm not putting all my, eds- uh, my all my eggs in the basket for this kid. So, mm-hmm. well, I mean, we'll see how it works out. All right. I mean, I I just personally feel like, they're banging on like those bubble screen plays um, that Tyreek Hill and Jayla Waddle can do. And that's going to get caught up really quickly in this league because teams will understand what you're trying to do before you even know it in a heartbeat. And defensive coordinators can find out in a quick second. Like, let, let's, let's talk about some of the greatest defensive coordinators who can find out a great, like, like a, a, a simple bubble screen. Um, you know, consistently use for so long. Um, And I feel like the Dolphins will use bubble screens for, like, you know, maybe one or two games because Tua can't throw the ball deep downfield consistently. Um, And that's what they're trying to bank on. Exactly. I don't know if it'll work consistently because defensive coordinators will find out, as I pointed out. But, man, I don't don't know, man. Tua just – he's just not it to me. I, I, and I agree. <clears throat> excuse me. I agree with you, Slay. And that's my that's my whole entire argument here. Where it's like I don't dislike the trade, but I don't like who's that quarterback in Miami. I right. mean, you, you, if you're Miami, you gotta be <laughs> you gotta be kicking yourself in the ass, knowing that you could have had Justin Herbert. You know, and- you know that's absolutely facts on that because I am trying to be unbiased because I'm from the islands and I'm gonna believe it, my island people, as long as it takes. But yes, Tua hasn't been proven that he is can be a quarterback in the NFL, and he has a lot of work to do. Maybe Tyreek Hill helps him, and I don't mean to interrupt you here. I'm, I'm sorry for doing it, but I totally understand your point on that. Oh, you're good, you're good. And that being said, exactly what you said, like that is such a hard division right now. To play in, they still got the Buffalo Bills, they still got the Patriots, and they still got the Jets to to play against. And last time I checked, you know, like Slay, let me know real clear how much the Jets improved this season. It's Bill <laughs> Belichick with the it's Bill Belichick's with the Patriots, and it's but, it's you know it's the Buffalo Bills. So Tua, as another Hawaiian to another Hawaiian, you better step the fuck up and play some good football because you have no thing. excuses this year. And you that's know? not me we're saying that. Put a damn cheetah on your damn side right. of the field. But hear me out, though, right? And mm-hmm. I don't mean to cut y'all off. Just hear me oh, out for like one second. Right? I don't Absolutely. dislike Tua. You know, I think that he could be somewhat serviceable. I just don't think that I, we're going to see because obviously I, I don't want to be talking out my ass. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know what kind of a system Mike McDaniels is going to have, but I think we can all assume it's going to be close to the, the Shanahan system over there. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know if we're – because honestly – as, even though I just said that it's similar to Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo got a stronger arm than Tua does. Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I, I just if this kid had a little bit of a stronger arm, and I, hopefully you would think Mike McDaniel's can play to this guy's strengths, then you're talking about something different. But even with Tyree Kill being traded, in my honest opinion, I don't know what Mike McDaniel's is. I don't even know, and y'all can correct me. I don't even know if he called plays over in, uh, yeah. over at the 49ers. Yeah, he schemed them up though. He was a big part of scheming up the plays, and that's why I truly respect uh, Michael McDaniel's. Um, a lot of people will obviously give shout outs and give credit to Kyle, but he played a big part of them getting the ground game going with the run game, designing and- the plays. Yeah, designing the plays. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. I, I so, actually I mean, researched that yesterday, and he designed the plays. Mm-hmm. So you gotta hope that you know it works. But at the same time, I mean, I just if right. you're asking me, I don't think again. I don't think that this makes. I don't think this helps them win the division because not only mm-hmm. do you have Buffalo, who I think we can all pencil in wins that division. If you're asking me if I'm going to choose Mike McDaniel or Bill Belichick, I'm sorry, I'm choosing Bill Belichick. Absolutely. I'm just being honest with you. And I'm not worried about their defense at all. 
what I am worried about is I think that they have a very poor wide receiver core, but, you know, they could still address that, whether that's in free agency. I know that there's not too many big names out there. They could also address it in the draft, you know, and if these receivers are kind of, you know, being out there for, you know, trades, I mean, this whole DK Metcalf stuff, I mean, I, I don't know what truth there is to that, but I mean, I don't think New England's in play for that, but I, I mean, would I be shocked? No. I just don't think it's a Belichick thing to do. Um, I think he'd rather address it in the draft. But, yeah, go, to go back to it, I think still, honestly, I still had them penciled in at three, even after the trade in that division. Because I, I can't – I until I Bills, see Bills, Patriots, Dolphins, Jets? Yeah. Because for, for me, I don't believe in Salah. I like the guy, but I just – I don't believe – and, and you know what? I don't want to be biased here because I don't like the Jets. I actually really don't like the Jets. So let me not try. <laughs> let me not be biased here. Mm-hmm. I, it's not that I dislike Zach Wilson. I just don't think that they have a good enough in scheme division, around him. Exactly. And in his division such, too. Such a poor division. You know, and you it's gotta like rely, you, got, you gotta rely on pure skill, but you also got a scheme in that division. If you get what I mean. Yeah, and and, yeah. and not only and look. You, you, the, if you're the Jets, well, you, you go general, and you yeah. hire you, you hire Robert Sala, who's known as a defensive mind, a de- uh, defensive minded coach. Then you have him draft your rookie quarterback. Now I don't know if Sala's dealt with the offensive uh, side of the ball, but I wasn't too impressed with their offense last year, in my honest opinion. Now I'm not saying that Zach. I, I mean, I'd still take Zach Wilson over to it. Hopefully, Zach Wilson could take that step forward, but I don't think mm-hmm. that Robert Sala. If you're asking me, would I take him over McDaniel's? Probably not, but I definitely would have taken him over Belichick or over uh, uh, McDermott over there. So again, yeah. But uh, to go back to what you just said, Zion, uh, I have the Bills, the Pats, the the Dolphins, and the Jets. And that I order. can't even lie though, the Jets did improve this offseason. Yeah, they did. They they did. They, they did. I mean, but but just, I just that just that whole AFC, yeah, not only you, the division slate, but the right whole the whole AFC in general has just right. improved too, you know. And like the Jets have, they they have an uphill climb as is, but now they have to climb Mount Olympus with how good the AFC. Like got. maybe if the Jets had this roster last year, they could have mm-hmm. been in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Is in the conference with maybe a new look Colts team, a new look Browns team, a new look Raiders team, a new look fucking Chiefs team, a new look everything in that conference. Everything's gonna change, man. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, you look at Bill's record without Brady, it speaks for itself. It ain't too good. Uh, and you have McDaniels leaving to go to uh, Las Vegas. You know, mm-hmm. so how's that offense gonna look? How is um, you know, uh, That's oh my god, how how oh my god, I can't even think of his name at the moment. Um, oh Josh my god, Fitz? no, 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 the QB they just picked up, Mac Jones, Mac Jones, my oh, phone. Mac Jones. Oh, okay. um, how is Mac Jones going to address to the new system? Do they keep the same system? I mean, the system, in my opinion, for Mac Jones, I thought it was okay, but I mean, to my in my honest opinion, though he was the, I think. People would say probably the most pro ready at that time. How high is the kid's ceiling? If we're being honest here, I mean, I don't know, man. So again, I think Patriots number two. Uh, Dolphins would it shock me if they went number two? Honestly, yeah. If I'm being real, it's just it that Tua needs to show you. But then, like that's the same debate I was having with Slay about the Jets. It's like it's not that I don't believe in the Jets. It's that the Jets never shown me anything yet. And exactly Alrighty. your point with Tua, it's like you have Tua haven't shown anything. You have he hasn't shown anything yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. He he hasn't. And look, I mean, you can make the same argument for Jones. I know that there's and we're we're fans of opposing teams, you know, from the outside looking within. You know, there's mm-hmm. probably it's probably the same thing with Hertz, you know, on the outside right. from other fans, same with Jones. It's just how it is. But um, you know, I'm sure Dolphins fans, you know, think that okay, if this kid has a better offensive line, if we get him a receiver, if we get him an offensive minded coach, same thing that Giants fans are saying for Jones. I mean, I'm not saying that it can't happen. It can. But I just 
for me, man, you gotta go. You gotta go through Buffalo twice. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, you gotta go through the Bills twice a year. You Patriots gotta go through the twice. Patriots twice. I mean, the Jets. You might split with them, uh, but shit, man, it's gonna be tough. It's tough, man. And before right. you move on to, oh, you want to say something, Slim? No, I was just gonna say, like, the only reason I'm bigging up the Jets is because, like, they made moves that can help them in the future. And that's oh, not dude. me saying, Absolutely. like, Absolutely. the um, the the Chiefs didn't, you know, or not the Chiefs. Um, Tyreek Hill to the Dolphins doesn't help the Dolphins. Because Tyreek Hill is Tyreek Hill. He's the cheetah for a reason. But, like, I'm just That's saying true. in terms of cap reasons, it, like, you know, it negligates the fact that you can't sign anyone that can really contribute to their team. And I'm not saying he can't contribute to their team. It's for, like, future reasons. Tyreek Hill is going to get older at some point, and that contract is going to start, like, really, really hitting them. And they yeah. won't understand that because he's Tyreek Hill. And they also have Jalen Waddle, so like they gotta they gotta think of this situation smartly because their GM ain't a smart dude. That dude costs like a lot of things. Like he costs himself Brian Flores. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah. you make a lot of good points in that, Slay. And I'm one one thing I want to point out too um, is uh, I see what you mean too. I wasn't trying to make uh, put you back on the spot with the Jets point. I see your I see your point in the Jets in the, in the fact of. Over the last year, but what they're doing now as a team, um, we we seen it over and over again. But I get your point, and you see kind of a shift in the tide with a kind of culture rebuilt, where they're actually bringing in players that could actually matter and could actually change the way the NFL and other fans perceive the Jets. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I I totally understand what you're saying that, and yeah, it's totally that division. We can't just hand. We can't just hand Buffalo the the championship just because no one thought the Bengals would make the Super Bowl. You know, it's the NFL, and that's why I love the NFL, because as much as I love the NBA, you can kind of predict halfway through the season, even at the start of the season, this day and age at least, who's going to be in the finals. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And with with the NFL, you never really know because every team is constantly changing, constantly improving, and plus it's such a contact sport that it makes it so hard due to the injuries and and all the other all the other concerns. And before we move to our next topic, I just wanted to give a shout out to all these content creators that made it here tonight. Please go sub up to Hit Squad. Go sub up to Big Play Slay. Go sub up to Airtime, which is uh, basically a collab with all the Next Generation's channels. Um, go sub up to LGC, and also go sub up to Joel, G Nation, Big Pat Talking Sports, Adam. Uh, Mac, Taj, everybody who I missed. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Go hit up Jeff on Twitter. Just get this shit popping with the Giants community. That being said, it, I'm going to play a video. I don't know if you've seen it. I don't know if this is going to get copyrighted. If it does, it sucks. It's fine. I'll try Twitter to fight it. Of- that being said, I'm going to just run it live on here. Um, We're going to watch the video of, you know, Will Smith slapping the shit out of Chris Walk. And it wasn't even slapping the shit out of Chris Walk. You know, it was just a small slap. But let's watch the video. Who knows what will happen? We'll try. Maybe we'll, we'll maybe we'll mute the volume. Or maybe we won't play it as loud. But um, we'll see what happens because this is a, such a great episode. I would hate to have this be taken down. But that being said, let me find this video and I'll pull it up. Did you see that hit squad? But uh, Chris Rock I getting did. slapped. <laughs> yeah. I did. That shit, All right. That so shit was wild. we're gonna we're gonna watch yeah. the video and then we're gonna we're gonna review it as as a, as a squad after it. So. So let's get it. The hardest job tonight. So this is just Chris Brown, you know, making jokes, obviously scripted. Obviously, the Oscars now and all these award shows hasn't been re- really making that much, giving that much views, you know, over the past couple of times. So uh, over the past couple of years. So they always have to script something up to make it make it more entertaining to the audience and and to give to give the audience something to talk about. Now, a lot of great movies won a lot of great awards tonight. But it, the whole show in itself was just overcasted by this whole Will Smith slapping the shit out of Chris Rock. And I love Chris Rock, and I'm going to give my, my views on it. But here it is. You know, obviously makes a joke about his, his wife. And as you can see here, let's rewind it a bit, guys. Let's, let's really analyze this. Chris Rock, I don't know if this was scripted or not, but as you can see in the video, Chris Rock kind of leaned in forward and, and kind of like he knew like a slap was kind of coming. 
like I kind of look at it the second time and kind of analyze in this video, you kind of see that Chris Rock kind of leaned into it. So is this the Oscars kind of, you know, scripting some shit up for to get us talking or did this really happen? Um, At first I was super not mad, but I, was, I didn't understand why Will Smith was, was so mad about him joking about his wife. But as I watch it back, you can kind of see that it, it looks kind of staged. It looks kind of acted in and it kind of looks like they just want us to, to get talking about it. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to the panel. And I want to know what the panel thinks about Will Smith slapping the shit out of Chris Rock. No, that's scripted for sure. That That's scripted. Mm-hmm. I mean, as you said, the way he leaned forward mm-hmm. to get that hit, um, it might have looked like from what the outsiders seen, mm-hmm. he slapped the living dog shit out of him. But if you closely look at it and, you know, kind of glimpse it one more time, you could see that he leaned forward and, you know, kind of ate that slap. And it seems scripted. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I observed. I mean, for me personally, I don't think it's scripted, if I'm being real. And, I like that. I like and, that. And I'll tell you why. I think him leaning forward, he was probably expected Will to come up to his ear and maybe Risk tell him something. something. Ooh, yeah. And instead, like he leaned forward. And if you see, if you look, Will kind of stops for a second and hits him. Because, I mean, let's, if let's you just walked up and up. slapped him. You know, it is what it is, but I think, you know, you cats the someone off guard like that, you know, and I think he's doing, hold on. Yeah, like he's waiting so, for uh, Bill to come up to his ear. Continue talking. I like, just wanted to put the b-ball up. Yeah, so like, um, you know, I think he's leading forward here, trying to see, okay, what is he going to say? Because this guy's just walking up on stage. Usually it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in my honest opinion, uh, all in all, <laughs> I think, a lot, I think a lot of people need this, but that's I, that. I love that. I love that. You know, Hell yeah, Logan, you me, have. I don't. Oh, I don't continue. think it's scripted though. But yeah, no, that's that's it. You know, at first hit squad, like I was so like. I was so not mad, but I'm like, why the hell are you slapping a guy? Like, that's just a joke. Like, obviously, like, they write these things out. We've seen a lot of other hosts on all these award shows past the. Um, uh, passed the line a couple of times. So the fact that he uh, he did that, I was more like, dude, why would you slap Chris Rock like that? Like, that's so disrespectful. And then when I seen it back, I'm like, okay, maybe that's scripted. But then I see a point when you're coming from, maybe he leaned forward to see if Will Smith is whispering something in his ear. That makes that absolutely, I like that point. Logan, do you have anything to say on the topic? Logan is a man of very few words tonight. That being said, thank you guys so much for being here. I know there was just kind of all over the place, but, you know, late night with Zenith, it's late. It's, you know, I'm going to get goofy at times. And I just want to thank Hit Squad again, thank Slay again, and thank very Logan good. again for being here. And, you know, as as this goes on, um, I, I kind of made this show to – yeah, I'm also, like I said earlier, I'm not trying to repeat myself, but I'm also late on some news sometimes, and I just figured, like, we'll have a late-night show, but we'll talk about all these other subjects and also always cover sports. That's being said. Thank you guys so much for watching, and let's get it. Subscribe to all these great content creators here. Y'all have a good night. Yep.